Hi, I'm Eva at Braver Creative, and today we are going to be building a Raku kiln. So the biggest difference between a standard and a Raku kiln is that the temperature changes very quickly in Raku. You heat up really quick and you cool off really quick. So today we will be using this barrel to create our very own Raku kiln. First off, we're going to cut a lid off of the top. I have seen builds that use a trash can that already has a lid, but we decided we wanted a slightly larger situation. So we're cutting about four inches off the top as the lid, and we're cutting a ring of four inches from the middle so that we can use those scraps for um, other pieces of metal that we'll, we'll weld on later. We are also cutting a four inch hole near the base, about three or four inches off the base, and one in the lid. This will allow us to blast the fire in the bottom and vent out the top. Next, we're drilling pairs of holes all up and down the sides for our attachment because we'll be layering insulation on the inside and we need to be able to wire that onto the kiln so that it's secure. So this is the absolutely massive box of insulation. We are using ceramic fiber insulation today, which is an insulation that can withstand crazy high heats that we will be dealing with. We will include an Amazon link below to this product. It worked great for us. And of course, because it is a fiber ceramic insulation, we do not want it on our skin, in our mouths, in our eyes. So definitely wear protection, gloves, glasses, probably long sleeves unlike me, or else you will end up with very itchy forearms. Conveniently, this cut rather easily with just some standard craft scissors. These aren't even nice scissors, they're really cheap, junky scissors and they cut through just fine. So I'm cutting out two layers of insulation for the interior of the kiln. So we're gonna need two layers for top, two layers for bottom of the circle, and then two big long rectangles to wrap around the sides. I have seen kiln builds with one, but a lot of people I was noticing were struggling with ramping up temperature and needing to add layers of bricks and whatnot to the outside. So I went ahead and just added two layers since we had enough with the one order of insulation and put it on the inside. So here Brad is just um, sanding off the edges with a file here. This is just to get little burrs of metal and sharp bits kind of filed down. We won't be touching the kiln much because it will be crazy hot, but we do want it to be safe if we do. Next we're welding on some flanges that we cut from that scrap ring of metal just so that our lid can kind of center on top easily when we are putting it on and off when it's crazy hot. We don't want it to be hard to center up and get aligned. We're also adding a little windshield here at the base so that our flame doesn't get blown around. And our barrel was a little bit rusty, so we are trying this Osfo stuff. Again, we will link below. It is a anti-rust, I guess it interacts with the rust and turns it into a compound that won't continue to rust. Not 100% sure on the safety of this, so do some research, but I think it's going to be okay. So in order to attach the insulation, we are going to need some little buttons so that our wire doesn't just pull through the insulation itself because it is so delicate. So I am just using my microwave kiln from the previous video to make some of these little ceramic buttons that I can put on the inside to kind of hold the insulation in place. If you're interested in the microwave kiln and using that, go check out the previous video. And now it's time to insulate the barrel. I am adding the two layers on the bottom. I'm not attaching those because gravity and this stuff is fairly stiff, so I think it will stay in place somewhat well, but for the sides and top, we will be attaching it with the holes that we drilled previously and those buttons that we just microwaved up. And again, this is with a clean, dry barrel. If you're not sure of the chemicals inside of your barrel, um, double check be sure make sure it's thoroughly cleaned if there were ever flammable things in the barrel check the labels probably don't use something that has flammable residues all that good stuff and here we are placing those rectangles i did cut the barrel to size that would work for the type of insulation i had so i'd have a little bit sticking out the top just to make sure that the seal of the lid is on well see here. And I did kind of mismatch the 
openings, the gaps on the edge, just to make sure that if those do start gapping while the kiln is firing, we still have another layer insulation. And next is the lid, again, two layers. So you can see I switched to long sleeves here, definitely do that. And we're just kind of tucking things in. Next, I am using my little bits of, this is Nichrome wire. Again, I will link it below. It's a super high temperature tolerant wire. Something like stainless or galvanized wire would definitely not work for this situation. You want something that is rated for going in the kiln. So either Nichrome or I think there's another one. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but you, I'll link the nichrome here and you kind of twist it off on those buttons and that should hold the insulation in place pretty well. After you have it all placed and whatnot, we are going to cut out those holes. This is the top hole for venting at the top of the lid and again at the bottom where the flame goes in. And look how nice it goes together. It fits right on top. It's perfect. I did those same buttons up and down on the inside of the walls of the kiln and look at that, we've got a kiln. I'm so excited. So this is some Raku clay that I have thrown previously. It is bone dry and ready to go in. So we did not install a thermocouple at this time. I really was struggling to find one that had good reviews and was able to get here in time for the kiln build. So we'll we be using these traditional cones or bars to fire the kiln to a temperature that will actually be hot enough to make the clay do its thing. So we're just gonna throw these little guys into the kiln. In retrospect, I should have made sure that there weren't anything super close to the side of the kiln where the hole is because that's where the fire comes in. It's a little extra hot and I did end up breaking one of these by kind of shocking it with the direct flame. So that was a mistake, but otherwise all went well. We watered down the grass anywhere nearby because Overly cautious is better than under cautious. We're double checking the gas line, make sure that we don't see any bubbles with the, the soapy water. And then we're just lighting her up. Again, you can see here that flame hit the side of this pot and just shattered it. And we placed those cones in the bottom sort of at an angle because we actually bought bars and not cones. Get self-supporting cones, they're a lot easier to monitor. Again, link will be below. I will also link to the horsehair shown there, which we will be using to kind of decorate the sides of our pots when they are finished. So it took about an hour to fire this because I was a little cautious at first trying to get it to warm up slowly. I think I probably could have heated it up a little faster after the first five or ten minutes. So in the end, it took about an hour for me to start seeing some deflection on that first cone. I probably could have left it a little longer to get to the second cone, but I actually bought cones that I wanted to get to as a minimum rather than buying a standard cone set where you have one that's too low and one that's too high. I went for one that was a goal and two that are too high. And we're using these fireplace tongs, again linked below, to get these out of the kiln. They did mark up the edge, but that was fine because I'm going ahead to mark up the edges with this black horsehair anyway so you weren't able to tell that there were some markings. I think after I use them a couple times, they won't be doing that too much anymore. So again, I'm just sprinkling some sugar, which is something I have seen as a cool effect, similar to the horse hair. It just carbonizes in the heat and leaves some sprinkly marks along with the fabulous twisty horse hair marks. And again, this horse hair I got on Amazon, link below. I was also noticing that you do have to catch the clay sort of at the right time. If you put the hair on too early, it vaporizes and you kind of can't see it. And if you put it on a little late, like here, it doesn't stick quite as well and do its thing. So you kind of have to jam it in there. Or sometimes it's cool enough already that it doesn't even mark the surface. But that is a trial and error thing. And for my very first fire in this kiln, I am very, very happy with the results. Oh, and by the way, we are using welding gloves. Might get some Kevlar gloves in the future because I was feeling some heat through these guys doing this stuff, but it worked out all right. You might notice the pot on the left also did break, and I think that was because I threw the side of it rather thick. So again, I'm not sure if that was a heat thing. I'm pretty sure that it was just way too thick. 
And again, that will improve with practice. I believe that our next video will again be some Raku stuff and I might get into some glazes and fun stuff like that in that video. So definitely make sure that you are subscribed and you've got the little bell on so that you see that next video in a couple of weeks here. And here you can see that that cone six did bend. So this is um, at a bisque temperature, at least for the clay that I have. Super happy with these pieces and super excited to see what else I can do in this kiln. As always, like, subscribe, and comment, and come back for more next time.